personal finance practice problem using Excel. Life insurance using personal financial statements part number eight, decreasing balance method number two. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we've basically been building it from a blank sheet in prior presentations, continuing on with it now. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. Example tab, in essence, being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We have the information on the left-hand side, calculations on the right-hand side. We started out putting together the personal financial statements, balance sheet, two formats of the income statement, accrual and cash based in essence then we started our life insurance calculations using some more kind of simplified types of methods then we did our uh, mortgage or our amortization table for the home loan breaking it out on a year-by-year -year basis to help us out with our more complex uh, calculations for life insurance we then tried a declining life insurance calculation adding time value of money concepts and now we're going to do a second time value of money calculation this time taking into consideration the loan balance and trying to think about well what if we paid off say the mortgage up front as kind of our starting baseline at the point of death given uh, the life insurance needs let's go to the practice tab where we have some pre-formatted cells on the right hand side so you could work through the practice problem with less excel formatting on the blank tab we're going to do the excel formatting so i'm going to go all the way to the right here so we're going to add some new data on the right so i'm going we left off last time way over here on bf it's not the bff but just the bf so then I'm going to make a skinny column for BG. So I'm going to take the last skinny column, which is way over here at AT, I think it is, even though I can't see it because it's too skinny. I'm going to go to the Home tab and then go to the Paintbrush and select that Paintbrush and we'll make this one a skinny BG. Let's pull over our data so I can pull over the same data that's right next to here. I'm going to say this is the inflation and I'll just copy this information down. I got inflation. Let's copy this to the right and I'm gonna copy it down. So then I'm gonna delete this last bit and I can't see anything here because I need to percentify if I wanna recognize. So I'm gonna to go to the home tab, a number group and percentify. Let's add a decimal. So there we have it. So we've got our inflation 2.5 rate of return. We're gonna assume 5% 2.5 on the real rate, making this a little bit larger. So there we have that. Now I'm going to go through this a little bit faster because a lot of it will be similar to what we did before, but we're going to have a, another or a different type of assumption with regards to that liability for the mortgage. Okay, so I'm going to take another skinny column. I'm going to take that skinny column and go to the home tab and paintbrushy that, paintbrush the BJ column. So we have a skinny there. I'm going to call in BK1. This is going to be called the life insurance needed it's gonna i'm gonna call it a decreasing balance for example method number two i'll just put a two i'm gonna make this a little bit wider and then i'm gonna put the years up top these are gonna be the years that we're gonna expect that we we're gonna need the flow for possibly based on our retirement years possibly a generic seven to 10, which would be a heuristic type of number, possibly based on how long the youngest child will reach, uh, get out of the house age, you know, or something like that. So I'm gonna pull this over to 10. So then we're gonna center this, home tab, alignment, center, and then let's make some black and white on the headers. So there we have that, we'll make this one black and white too, black and white on the header. Okay, so we're going to do our same yearly expenses. We got to break down our expenses by kind of behavior of the expenses. So our yearly cash flow, if we were going to die, someone's dependent upon us, how much would they need for the yearly cash flow needs? And so we're going to say, we're going to start with the expenses, 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 not include, including the mortgage. And the basic bottom line assumption here that's gonna be a little bit different, if I go way back on over to my balance sheet, we're gonna go back on over to the balance sheet. And so we're gonna say a couple of things we could we can base our calculations on. We might say, hey, look, I'm gonna look at it from future cash flows, keeping, for example, the mortgage on the books 
as we did last time and assume we're just going to continue to pay off the mortgage as per the arrangement with the mortgage and think about the future cash flows that would be necessary to do that or you might start off by saying hey look i'm going to try to get enough life insurance to pay off the mortgage and possibly any other liabilities but the mortgage would be the big one and therefore they could pay that off at the point of death which means that my cash flow needs after that point will be much lower assuming that we pay off the, the big liability up front so that's going to be the, the the thought process that we have here so if i look at my expenses then we had the two kind of methods this method over here is is not including these are the life insurance that's not the income statement income statements we have this one over here not including the cash flows for like liabilities this one included the car and the in and the and the credit card but also the mortgage so i'm just going to pick this one over here say we're not going to include the liabilities i'm just looking at the expenses and i'm going to pay off the big liability at the point of death we're going to assume and therefore the li the expenses or the cash flows they would need at a year by year basis after death would only be the 21,840, not including at least the mortgage. And so I'm gonna go back on over and say, all right, so that means that way over here, we're gonna say that the expenses are gonna be equal to, I'm gonna go over to that income statement and pick up the needed expenses on a needs basis, not including cash flow for the mortgage. So there we have it. Now I'm gonna copy that across i'm going to do it this way this time i'm going to say equals the one before it enter and then i'm going to put my cursor on the one i'm going to just copy that across to 10 and then we'll consider time value of money related to it shortly and then i'm going to also have the nanny costs that we're going to we're going to add to it we're going to say if i die let's tack on and say there's going to be some nanny costs that might be necessary to take care of the kids uh, given the fact that we're short a an adult in the room not the not that I was ever an adult in the room, but we're going to then go ahead and say we're going to take that one and copy that one across. And so there we've got that. Wait a sec. That's the wrong number. Hold on a second. Equals. That's that's the funeral cost. We want the nanny stuff. So there it is. I'm going to say. And so now it picks it up all the way across. So that looks good. OK, then what we'll do is I'm just going to add those up as my yearly cash flow needs. I'll just sum that up equals the sum of those two. And I'm going to copy that across, copy it across, copy that Roger out, Roger out. And then I'm going to put an underline under the 3006 underline home tab font group, not the double, but just the single underline. And because the double we, re we reserve for the bottom line, not just the standard underline. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna indent home tab alignment indent and double indent here alignment double indent. So then we, we might have our our calculations for say the future value. So now I'm gonna say the future value. In other words, if I died like one year out, you would expect that the needs in order to meet the same obligations would now be higher due to inflation due to the purchasing power of the dollar having gone down and therefore we're going to say inflation's at the 2.5 percent and note it might be more proper to kind of stagger this to say well at the end of of year zero then i would need the 25,000 increased a year but i'm going to assume this 25,000 a year later at the 2.5 increase so in other words in year zero we would have the same amount if i go to the year one let's start at year one that 25 uh, 440 would be larger in future value terms due to inflation for the same basket of goods and whatnot so we're going to say future this is going to be future value shift uh shift nine the rate is going to be this 2.5 percent for inflation f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the bi and two so that it doesn't move when i go to the right because it's outside of my data set data table i'm working in comma number of periods i'm going to pick up up top so that can move to the right as i move it to the right and then comma it's not a payment because this is not an annuity therefore comma again we want the present value which is that 25 440 and enter so there we have it you can see it increases of course i'm going to copy it to the left and we'll just get the same number that's why i didn't do it over there because it's zero periods out and then i'll copy it to the right and we can have it going out to the right and then that's how much would be needed at the end 
So then I'm gonna go back on over and say, now we've got the, we're gonna call this lump sum for yearly cash flow. So a couple ways we could think about this. We could say, okay, well, and now I'm considering like the end of, of year zero, how much would I need at that point in time? I'm gonna sum up the, pri the next time frame up to, to 10 periods out. So in other words, how much lump sum would I need? One way we can think about it is to say equals the sum of years uh, one out to year 10. And that's what our needs would be uh, there. And I could say enter. And so if I had one lump sum to cover that cash flow based on that increase, that's one way we can think about it. Although, of course, if you got it in a lump sum, we might be able to invest some of it to get earnings on it. So we'll take that into consideration shortly. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to put that second one, meaning that item that's out here. I don't want the end point to move when I copy it to the right, but I do want the beginning point to move. Therefore, that second number F4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter and the number and enter. So if I copy it to the right, putting my cursor on the fill handle to do so, copying it on over to the right. So there we have it. Notice this last one gets a little messed up because I locked this 10 cell. So it's actually trying to go to that one and then kind of backwards. So it kind of messes it up. So that one should really be zero because we're saying at the end of year 10. So you could, you could compensate for that there if you so choose. Okay, so then we're gonna say, all right, another way we might look at it, we might say, let's take a look at the lump uh, based on year of death. So another way we could say it is, well, I'm just gonna take this current amount here times the number of years that are remaining left. So we might then say, okay, I'm gonna start with whatever the future value is at the point of death and try to just simply multiply it times the years that are remaining. So I could say that this would be equal to this amount times, I'm gonna get a little bit tricky on, on the 10 years. Instead of putting just 10, I'm gonna put brackets and I'm gonna put the 10 over here because I wanna copy it across F4 on the keyboard to make that absolute, an absolute reference. And then I'm gonna subtract the zero up top. So this one will move to the right, but the 10 will not. So the next one will be nine, for example, enter. And then I can copy that to the right. And so now I could say, okay, well, whatever year I die at, if I die six years in, I wanna take whatever that future value is at that point in time and multiply it times the number of years that are remaining. That's one way we could take a look at it. And then the other way we could look at it is we could say, okay, well, let's try to say insurance uh, needed for cash flow. Let's think that instead of doing that, we're gonna to try to say, I, I'd like to have an equivalent amount of purchasing power based on, based on you know, this number into the future and have an annuity that can basically pay it out. In other words, if they get a lump sum payment, then they should be able to invest it, hopefully getting a return of the 5%. So if I assume there's a return of 5% and inflation is gonna eat into that return of the 2.5, the net or real rate is gonna be the 2.5. So how much would they need in a lump sum in order to get, you know, an annuity of payments that would be equivalent to the, this amount so that they can make so that they can make their payment so that's going to be a more uh, a lower kind of number that we're going to get to do that a more affordable possibly number for the life insurance so we're going to say okay let's try that calculation that's going to be we're going to take the present value of an annuity and i'm going to base it on this future value calculation whenever the point of death is so i'm going to say okay negative present value brackets we're going to take the rate which is going to be the real rate which is gonna be the rate of return on the investment they can have minus the inflation F4 on the keyboard to make it absolute because I wanna be able to copy it to the right without that cell moving, comma, number of periods. I'm gonna say is going to be, in this case, 10. I'm gonna take the 10 over here, F4 on the keyboard, minus, doing that tricky minus thing again, minus the zero, so that when I copy it to the right, it'll be 10 minus one and, and 10 minus two and so on, and then, comma and then the payments this is an annuity this time i'm going to say it's going to start at whatever that future value is at the point in time of death in this case the 25 440 and enter let's copy that to the right so i'm going to copy that to the right auto filling it to the right and so there we have it so now we're saying okay if i died like five years in 
five years later, then the current time frame, the future value would be the 28,783. And I'm trying to get an annuity based on a real rate of return, the 2.5, which is the rate of return they can invest that lump sum in minus the inflation that would kick into it so that they can have you know the equal amount in terms of purchasing power basically going forward from that point. So that's gonna be a little bit less than just me just trying to figure out the lump sum you know, amount uh, in this format. So that's the number that we're gonna use for that calculation. And then we've got the next thing we're gonna be picking up is the mortgage. Let's say the mortgage liability is gonna be a one lump sum calculation. I'm gonna say, I just wanna pay off the mortgage up front. So I'm gonna say whatever the mortgage is, and this is where our annuity table comes in. Notice we made our annuity table over here and we made it based on not months, but years so that we can do this kind of calculation. I can say, well, in year zero, it's at the 150,000, but, and I'm just going to pick up the liability saying, I, I don't want to just pay off the payments. I want to just wipe out the mortgage. And this is some life insurance you might tie directly to the mortgage in this way so that it will decline. It will go down over time. It'll decrease as the mortgage gets paid off if you're still living, right? So the, that would mean it would be a cheaper life insurance. So I'm gonna say in year two, I'm gonna say it's gonna, it gets a bit tedious. In year two, I'm gonna scroll over here and say that we've got the 145,995 tab. In year three, I'm gonna scroll over and say that we have in year three, the 137,230. In year four, scrolling over, we're gonna say that we had 132, 437, and then in year, wait a sec, that was not year four. Did I get messed up? I'm gonna say, and you know, start it over in year two, I said that it was going to be the 141, 744, and then in year three, it's gonna be then the 137, 230, and so on. So I won't let, make you watch this, but I'll continue on that process. Okay, so now I have it here. So we've we've added those amounts. Now notice, note from the future here, we've got this a little bit staggered incorrectly and in that we have a zero and then 150 here. And so we're gonna move that to the right so that we have period zero being the 150 and then starting at year one and so on. We'll correct that at the end of the presentation. So it'll look like this. And we'll do that when we get down to here, summing it up. So you can put the proper number here. If you so choose, it won't have any impact on anything else until we sum everything up. To line these numbers up, you might use this trace tool, which I like to put down here. You could find it in the formulas tab and use your trace tool and tab across to see where that information is coming from. Useful tool to know. That the year that I based this on, the 10 years, might be until I'm re in retirement or the spouse is in retirement or the kids out of the house or something like that might not tie into the same amount of years left for the mortgage. So you could kind of adjust this for the mortgage, which we're saying currently has 20 years at this case that is left over. You could go out further, you know, on 20 years, for example, to cover these differences in the needs that might be there with regards to the, the, uh, the needs for the, the 10 years for the child or to retirement or something like that and then the mortgage if you so choose. But I'm just gonna stop it there here and continue on. That's gonna be the major difference that we had from the prior calculation where we kind of just assumed in the prior calculation that we're just gonna continue to make the payments. Okay, so then we're gonna say that we got the emergency fund, emergency fund, which we said is generally gonna say six months, six months expenses. So I have my yearly needs up top. So this is a one-time need now. So I'm gonna take that yearly need that we futurize with the future value and divide it by two. And that's gonna give us the 12, seven, uh, 20. I'm gonna copy this across. So we don't know when that's gonna happen, but we're gonna say there might be this one-time event that we need the emergency funds to kick in. So that's why it's a little bit different of a calculation than this yearly cost up top or the mortgage then we've got those goal-based items which is the college for example the college and so, so with the college just like we did before let's just redo it real quick we're going to say college and we're going to just we're just going to calculate it for that one special kid that last youngest kid that i'm going to make this that's going to go to college so we're going to say i'm not sure if he's lucky or unlucky given the state of the colleges these days but we're going to say 
the cost, current cost of college. This is how you do these goal oriented ones, similar for the retirement. And we're gonna say, if it costs today 35,000, then the, then, and it takes years, we'll just say equals, equals the years to start. It's 10 years be before that kid is gonna be exposed to the great experience of college. We're gonna say then, that means that the future value is going to be what's going to be the future value that we, they will need when they start college. This is what we'd have to do. We've got to get the future oriented goal and then think about how much we'd have to put away until in, under savings to get to that goal. Negative future value brackets. The rate is going to be, we're going to say inflation is the 2.5% comma number of periods, 10 years comma. It's not a payment because we're not talking about an annuity. So two commas present values the 35,000 and enter. So we're going to say that 44,803 is what we need in future value terms. But if we die, they can take whatever lump sum we have, hopefully invest it at 5%. And so how much you know, would, would we need in order for it to grow to get to that 44,803 so we can expose to our child to the wonders of the current college uh, situation. So now we're gonna say, so how to do that. So we're gonna say, let's say that we need then Let's say present value. I'm going to say negative present value shift nine, the rate in, on the growth. Now it's going to grow at 5%. So it's going to grow at 5% and we're going to say, and we're going to say F4. So I can copy that to the right comma number of periods. This is our tricky number of periods. Currently it's going to be 10, but I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard to make it absolute. And then I'm going to say minus the zero, which is still going to be 10. And then we're going to say comma and the payment. There's no payment because this is not an annuity comma future value needs to be this 44,803. That 44,803 is outside of our data. Therefore, I need to make it absolute F4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the BI and nine and enter. And then I could say, okay, let's copy that across. So you can see this one increases as we get closer to the goal. So if I die at, at, 10 years later, I would need the full amount. But if I die earlier than that, you would think whatever money they get, they could invest in order to reach that, that goal would be the idea. The same would be for retirement. So if I had a retirement goal, retire, er, retirement. And again, you'd have to figure out, you know, what's the retirement goal, do a similar calculation on how much you want at retirement. And we're just gonna say it's 500,000. Just to, just to give another example of another kind of goal-oriented item. It's gonna say 500,000 as our retirement goal. And so we would do the same thing than similar calculation. You might do a similar calculation if you're thinking about an elderly parent that might need, uh, might need help in later years. You could do a similar kind of calculation, a goal-oriented type of calculation. So I'm gonna do this again, negative present value, shift nine, the rate is going to be at the two at the five percent that we could hopefully get a return on f4 on the keyboard making it absolute comma number of periods is going to be the 10 over here f4 on the keyboard because i don't want that endpoint to move minus the zero the zero that one i do want to move therefore no f4 comma and then we got no payment because this is not an annuity two commas to get to the future value and that then is going to be the 500,000. I don't want that to move to the right when I copy it to right. Therefore, absolute reference F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the BI and 11. So let's copy it to the right, putting my cursor on it, see if we did it correctly. So I'm going to copy that over. So now we're saying similar kind of idea. If they get it, the lump sum, we can put in the 306,957. If they can invest that, then they can get a return on it, hopefully to get to the targeted goal. That would be the idea there. And then we've got the funeral expenses. Funeral expenses. This is a one-time cost. Just burn me up and throw me in the ocean. It's not expensive. Have a bonfire. It's not environmentally sound. We can't burn you in a bonfire because there's, you'll cause pollution. For crying out loud, $8,500. Just because I'm bereaved doesn't mean I'm a sucker. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna increase that uh, for inflation as we go going forward. 
So we can do this a couple different ways. Let's do it the easier way this time. Instead of using future value, I'm just gonna say, okay, if there's 2.5% inflation, I can say this is gonna be equal to the prior balance times brackets. I'm gonna say one plus 2.5. So it's gonna be 100, uh, 102.5, right? <laughs> so that we can increase it by 2.5 is the point. So then I'm going to put, I need the brackets because of order of operations so I can add before multiplying. And there we have it. And if I copy that across, then it should take the prior balance. Hold on a second. It didn't do it. It didn't do it right. Prior balance. And then I need to make an absolute reference of this 2.5 because I don't want it to move because it's outside the data set F4 on the keyboard. Enter. Now let's do it. I'm going to copy it to the right. It picks up the prior number times that one plus 2.5, 102.5. Let's copy that across. So there we have that. So the one time funeral costs. Okay, so that's gonna give us our life insurance before, before considering our assets. Life insurance before assets, before assets is gonna be equal to the sum. So I'm gonna be picking up this factor, not, nothing above that. And then I'm also going to have the, oh, hold on, the mortgage. I'm going to copy this down. For some reason, I started the mortgage one period off. Hold on, a, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, I think I fixed it now. And one way you can kind of check these kind of things, notice is you could use these little tracer tools, which I put into my favorites over here. They're in the formula tab and the tracing. So I can see where the formula is coming from. So right, and that's one way that we could try to try to see if I'm pulling these from the right area. So it looks like they're being pulled from here. So I think that's appropriate. And then I can turn those things off. So hopefully I've got that right. Remove, you can remove it here. Those are really neat little tools. Okay, so let's add it up again. Equals the sum. And I'm gonna be picking up then this insurance needed on down to, to paying off the mortgage, to the emergency, the college, retirement, and the funeral, and enter. And so that's gonna give us the 128334. If I copy that to the right, I'm gonna copy it to the right. And so there we have it. And so uh, that looks good. And then we are going to consider how many assets are currently in place. So less, so I'm gonna call it liquid liquid assets that are currently on the books on the balance sheet. So I'm going to say equals scrolling over to the balance sheet. And we could say, okay, in terms of the balance sheet, we could we could have then the liquid assets, which I'm going to say are anything in, in checking or the cash or, or savings, for example, that I can have access to plus the IRA, which I'm going to say they might have access to at the point of death, or at least it could be used for retirement kind of components of our calculation, which we added. So I'm going to say enter. And so there is that. I'm going to make it negative, double clicking on it and put bracket, negative brackets so that I make the whole thing negative and then put my cursor on it and drag to the right. So we're going to subtract that amount out and hold on a second. I can't do it like that because it's not absolute. So instead, I'm gonna just say the next, next cell equals the prior cell, enter, put my cursor on it and drag it to the right. We'll do it that way. So there we have it. And that's gonna give us our insurance, our uh, life insurance needed. And I'm gonna sum this up equals the sum of these two, which will subtract them out given the second one is a negative number and copy that across, copy that across, roger that, copy out. Let's put some underlines up here. I'll put an underline here, font group underline. Let's put an underline here. I'll say font group underline, double underline here. And so we'll say font group double underline. And so those are just some tools. I'll make this a little smaller that you can use uh, and another method that, that you might basically consider and possibly ending up with more of a, a declining balance over time, which might be uh, useful for say term life insurance. I'm gonna select this whole thing that could be more affordable if you have that declining balance. So those are some tools that could be home tab, font group, brackets, 
and we'll hit the drop down blue. I'm gonna blue a fire. If you don't have that blue, more colors, standard blue right there. Okay. And we'll go to the to the left. I'm gonna make this blue and bordered, blue and bordered, and this blue and bordered, blue and bordered, this blue and bordered, blue and bordered, and review it, spell check it. Looks good. So there it is. 